Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So, uh, I feel compelled to say if you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back, everybody. All right. So, this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, November 29th, 2018. We are almost in no December, you guys. It's kind of exciting. The end of the year is quickly approaching yes so general energy reading this is not specific in any way not sign specific not love or career specific this is just whatever spirit wants to talk about with us today um take what resonates leave what doesn't it is still a general reading so everything is not necessarily going to resonate for everybody also this doesn't have to be what's going on right now for you Energy is fluid, guys, so things could, this could be something that, you know, is maybe going to happen in the future or um, something that may have already happened in the past. Yes? All right. So, let's get to it. <laughs> Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Thursday, November 29th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so... Whoa. Um... It's interesting because when I started channeling the energies, you know, in my morning meditation and all that, I was seeing orange and orange is like the, yes, the emotions, the sacral chakra, the emotional body. Um, but it's also, I'm getting a vibe of playfulness here. So, um, there may be some of us, maybe you're feeling extra playful. Um, maybe you're just wanting to go out and have fun with friends. I mean, it is the season for that. You know, it's, it's the holiday season. It's time to like, you know, be with family, be with friends, enjoy, you know, holiday, holiday parties and stuff like that. Um, I feel like for some of you, there could be some parties coming through, you know, for the holiday season. And honestly, with all this hermit-like energy that we've been going through lately, I really would recommend, you know, if you get invited to a holiday party, you know, a bunch of friends are going out, meeting out, meeting up somewhere, whatnot, maybe think about going, you know. I'm not saying get back into, like, a party regimen of going out every weekend, but, you know, if there are, like, one or two events happening, or just a few events happening here or there throughout the season, I would recommend going out and, you know, spending time with people. You know, we have been in a bit of a, cur uh, a purgy and hermit-like energy, um, and I do still, like, we're, f yes, and Spirit is saying we're definitely still in that kind of energy, but if you get an opportunity to go out and have some fun with some friends, I would recommend you do so, Yeah. Okay, here we go. Thursday, November 29th, 2018. All right, I'm also seeing some green. Um, this is a light green. Um, it's still, you know, a little... It, it's almost like a bright emerald green. Um, and Archangel Raphael is here, you know, saying, I'm here to help you heal your heart chakra because that's a lot of what's happening right now. And that actually can really help you um, going out with friends or whatnot, just hanging out, spending time with people that you enjoy, spending time around that lift your spirits, that leave you feeling uplifted, um, you know, that are in some sort of a higher vibration. They don't have to be crazy high, but like if... It, Spending time in situations that are not low in vibration that would drag you down, that leave you um, feeling uplifted, that's definitely going to help your heart chakra healing, says our Archangel Raphael. Okay, so go totally go ahead. If you feel inclined to do so, please spend some time with friends, family, loved ones, whoever makes you feel good and feel happy, yeah? Um, Archangel Raphael is here expressly, like he's really standing here saying, hey, let them know I'm here. Um, he's really trying to help. 
there's a lot of heart healing that's happening, especially now, you know, whether you're on a twin flame journey or not, whether you just broke up with someone, you know, that you may have thought there are, there's a good amount of that out there right now. There, there are quite a few people out there that are dealing with a heartbreak of not having a companion they once had, or they thought they were going to have, especially during this season. Um, but Archangel Raphael is here to help you fortify your heart and to help you not fall into despair, thinking that maybe you deserve this in some way, you're inadequate in some way. Whatever is being cleared up for you right now is really just making space for something new to come in, okay? And you just have to trust in the universe. So Archangel Raphael is here to help you fortify your heart um, and heal your heart, clear out the, the blockage, he says. All right. Awesome, guys. So let's get into the message for today. Okie dokie. Thursday, November 29th, 2018. Best messages for us today, Spirit. Thank you so much. Okay, we've got something so far. What have we got? What have we got? We've got the magician, you see? You're manifesting. You guys, we really are in a space of manifestation right now, okay? All right, there's one more pull, but I want to talk about this first. Ah, yes. Oh my God, this is beautiful. This this is a beautiful way just to start out the reading. I'm not I'm not done pulling yet, but here we go. We have we're starting with the, this is the the theme of the reading today: the magician and divine wisdom. All right, the magician. Obviously, many of us know what the magician is about. The magician is about um, manifesting your desires. Uh, utilizing your, the tools that you have as a multidimensional being to manifest what it is you truly desire in this world. Divine Wisdom is a unique card in this deck. This is the Moonchild Tarot. Um, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. I really love it. And it has quite a few, uh, quite a few extra cards. On Monday, we got one of them, and it was... What was it? Oh, gosh. The universe, which was talking about everything coming full circle. Well, here now we have divine wisdom. And this is a depiction of Isis. Um, uh, it talks about, you know, what is, what are you learning? What has the universe been trying to teach you? Okay. And especially with Archangel, I'm going to read from the book just to get a little more specific message to make sure I'm not missing anything. But, um, Especially, this is kind of what Archangel Raphael was saying here. You know, there could be a lot. <laughs> I, had, I had a dream about a friend of mine, um, someone that I've been wanting to connect with for some time. But, um, and I feel like we are connecting. But anyway, he had this look on his face before I woke up. And I asked, I was just inquisitively was thinking, huh, I wonder what's wrong with him. And I heard existential dread. So, <laughs> so there's, I think there's a lot of that happening right now. There, many of us may be going through some sort of existential crisis or something like that. Um, and it's basically, it's just an upheaval, right? And the message that's coming through here with the magician and divine wisdom is what are we creating or, or the fact that we are creating through what the universe has been teaching us lately. So if you're going through some sort of existential crisis, Archangel Raphael, Raphael is here to tell you or to help you, well, to tell you that, you know, your heart is in the process of being, uh, of healing, okay? You're purging out a lot of the past that no longer serves you. And so, of course, that's going to naturally, logically, you may start to question your existence. You may start to question your life, what it is you've been doing, um, over these past X amount of years or whatnot. Some of you may come to realize that what you've been doing is something that you don't really want to continue doing down the line in the future. And so you are in the process of clearing that, purging that um, to make way for what you truly desire to be doing. But there could be some, some of you may get caught and I apologize for laughing. I'm not trying to laugh at you. I'm just, it, it, I'm just saying, it's just coming through this way. I'm chuckling because it makes perfect sense because some of you may fall into a mindset for, for a moment where it's like, dear God, what have I been doing with my life? How could I have possibly... And, and again, I apologize. I'm not trying to laugh at you. I'm more laughing with you because I totally get it. I totally get it. I totally get it. I've been there, okay? But um, this is the theme for right now. 
we are we are all in a process of creating of manifesting through what it is we've been learn learning in our lives lately over the past few years maybe even the past few months i really i mean just scorpio season alone was transformative majorly transformative for a lot of us okay and now that we're in Sagittarius season, now we're actually in an energy, and this is all um, according to Western astrology, but now that we're in Sagittarius season, you know, we have the ability to, to really create, and pretty rapidly too, um, to, tie up, to, to tie up loose ends to, especially with Mercury being in retrograde, to um, clear up, you know, do last a bit of purging, um, uh, clear up things, release things, all that kind of stuff. Make way for the new, yeah? Let's see what else we've got for today. Thursday, November 29th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. Five of Cups, King of Pentacles. Okay. Yeah, Five of Cups. There's that existential dread. And we've got the Emperor here. Oh, look at that. The Ace of Cups. And the Ten of Pentacles. All right, I'm going to stop here. Ah. Underneath the deck is the Hermit. All right. 11-11 on the counter. Wow. Okay, here. Okay, okay, okay. We've got the King of Pentacles and the Five of Cups. Then we have the Emperor, the Ace of Cups, and the Ten of Pentacles. All right. So, um, we're still, we're, we're talking... We're talking lots of masculine energy lately, all right? If you're a twin flame, this could potentially be your divine masculine. But I like to look at this, personally, I like to look at this now. Uh, me, I'm, I'm a twin flame. I'm on the twin flame journey. Um, and I very much lately have been uh, working with my masculine side, right? Bringing my masculine energies into balance with my feminine energies as the as the rise of the divine feminine continues, right? Um, and so I like to look at this, like when we're talking, when I'm picking up heavily masculine energy or heavy feminine energy for the reading, I like to look at it as how is that relating to me internally, okay? So I, I encourage you guys to do the same. So what we have here with the King of Pentacles and the Five of Cups, this is that existential dread I was talking about, the existential crisis. This is FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of us. There are a lot of us out there that just feel regret, remorse. Um, this is deep, but what I'm getting with the King of Pentacles here is someone that feels like they may have really missed out since they were a kid. This really extends back into childhood. This could even be your, this could be your divine masculine. This could be just a masculine energy out there, or this could be the masculine within you. Um, and it being the masculine within you makes perfect sense because, you know, many of us dealt with rough things as a kid. Um, and we were really kind of like broken into being this hard, twisted, masculine, whatever, you know, as we grew up. And so now that we have become adults, or at least people of a certain age, to be consciously aware of, you know, of existential dread, says the universe, or the, the, the divine. Now, we have this energy of feeling like we've missed out with the Five of Cups. Regret, remorse, shame, maybe even a little bit of fear, okay? But this is, this is really, this is kind of a past energy. I know there are a lot of us out here that may still be feeling that, um, but, it, but it, ultimately it will become a past energy. You will move through this, okay? All because this is part of the learning process. So many of us are here right now in this hermit stage, dealing with the existential dread, the existential crisis, okay? wondering where we're going in our lives what like questioning what we've been doing with our lives even but then here's here's the glow up okay yes glow g-l-o-w glow up okay because <laughs> you've got you got here the emperor the ace of cups and the ten of pentacles so either you have come out of this 
existential dread, or you're in the process of coming out of it, and this is where you're potentially going to land. Chances are this is, this is where you're going to be once you come out of this regret, remorse, this fear. This, the Emperor, the Ace of Cups, and the Ten of Pentacles, is your place of power in manifestation with the Magician and Divine Wisdom. All right. Again, I, I, I do still want to read from the book for divine wisdom, but the channeling is coming through. So I want to get it out before I, you know, before I, before it flies away on me. But um, you have someone who's taking their power back. Now, this is taking their power back in a better way than they have in the past. The emperor is about masculinity. It's about masculine energy. It's the action taker. It's the king of all kings. It's the father of all fathers. Um, this energy right now feels good. It feels very good. This feels balanced. This feels like this is like the antithesis to the twisted masculine, toxic masculine energy that has plagued our society. Okay, this is a person that has come up um, out of the muck and has learned to love themselves. In the process of all of this shit that's gone on in their lives and in the lives <coughs> excuse me of everyone around them this is someone that has learned through this hermit stage has really taken the, the, the lessons that the universe has been doling out with the hermit with divine wisdom and really turned everything around for themselves and now they're in the in a space of moving towards the Ten of Pentacles. So this to me is the physical representation of everything that they feel and want and desire and are inside internally. This is the universe conspiring to work to 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 conspiring with you to help you manifest everything that you've always wanted. Okay. And this isn't just, this isn't just like material fulfillment. I'm sorry. Uh, this isn't just emotional fulfillment. This is material fulfillment. This is it finally being tangible. You can see it, taste it, smell it, touch it, experience it in a physical way. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Now, Please understand that this is going, it's still going to take some time, all right? The Ten of Pentacles is not an overnight thing. And the Emperor understands that, all right? But the Emperor has this full cup of self-love. This full cup of self-love. This cup runneth over, all right? So they are in a position or a place to allow things to develop. It's, it's like, it feels like if this... Emperor were reversed, he would be rushing things, he would be dogmatic, he would be strict and unbending, he would be selfish, narcissistic. But here, upright, especially with this Ace of Cups, especially coming from a place of being super materialistic with the King of Pentacles and yet still feeling like you missed out, still feeling like you have lost, um, having regret, remorse. And, man, and, and now coming to a position where you are the master of your domain, you have moved out of this materialism, now this is someone that understands the value of emotion and understands the value of passion, that understands the value of groundedness, that understands the value of intuition. These are all of the kings, kings of ace, I'm sorry, kings of, king of wands, pentacles, swords, so logic, and um, cups, yes, understands the value of logic, logical detachment, right? While still having be attached enough to still have some sort of compassion, but still being grounded enough to have some sort of passion, right? This is someone that's balanced in all of these areas and now is able to love themselves for who they are and then in turn love everyone else for who they are in the process and be patient and allow this Ten of Pentacles to not only grow, but to flourish. The Ten of Pentacles is not something that happens overnight. It takes investment, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes patience, it takes work, okay? And the Emperor knows that and is 100% willing to do that because even though he can be stern and 
you know, tough sometimes. He's still this, at least with this energy here, he still feels very compassionate, deeply compassionate. All right. I do want to read from Divine Wisdom just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, goodness, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. The floodgates are beginning to open as the seeded wisdom of the ancient mysteries are now pouring through. This is the divine knowledge that exists within your cellular memory and the power of your own unique story. You may be experiencing a breakdown of the artificial structures that wish to fall by the wayside as new forms of wisdom stir within your heart. This may also indicate a deeper sense of awakening as you connect with various forms of teachings, lineages, or philosophies that call out from beyond this lifetime. Divine wisdom comes as a sacred reminder of the sovereign truth that rests within you, waiting to be reclaimed and activated now. Depicted in this key as the representation of Isis, the lunar goddess of 10,000 names, we are reminded of the cycles of time that have birthed many sages, mystics, and ascended guides who have also filled our collective narrative of magic and mystery. Just wanted to read that little bit. That little bit. Some key words here to ask yourself. How is the universe expressing its wisdom to me? Also, what new forms of knowledge awaken within me now? Good things to think about there. All right, guys. So next. Next, we're going to get some clarification here. <laughs> I'm going to start with this existential crisis here with the king of pentacles and the five of cups okay just one more and then we'll get going the sun's coming up guys and it's not cloudy today so there's probably going to be some real good color there's some good color already I really like being up now and, watch, and getting to watch the sunrise. It's really kind of awesome. I'll share it with you. If I can get a good picture, I'll share it. All right. So, existential crisis. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but... Oof. I mean, what, what can you do but laugh, right? You have to at this point. And that's what the universe is saying. There are some of you that are really getting caught up in the, in the oh, God, where, where have I been? What have I done? Blah, blah, blah. And... That's not even worth it. Don't take yourself so seriously. That's another message of the King of Pentacles here. This is someone that takes himself extremely seriously. And it's just like, honey, you need to lighten up, please. <laughs> For God's sakes, just lighten up. Laugh a little, you know. Good Lord. All right, here we go. Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, all right, good, good. The Six of Wands. And it's funny because... Some of you may look at that and be like, the Six of Wands, what do you mean this is a victory? Well, for some of you, it's pride and it's ego, all right? But also, for some of you, it is victory through learning from the contrast. Again, this is also an energy, this is an energy of, this is an energy of taking yourself way too seriously. Like, you need to humble a little bit, boo-boo, all right? You've got the Page of Pentacles, too, all right? So this is, this is definitely starting anew. Okay, Cause so now, in a sense, you may feel like you've gone from the King of Pentacles to the Page of Pentacles, but this almost feels like a tower moment in the sense that, you know, maybe you started over, or maybe, you know, you needed to, well, no, you have started over, okay, but this is in a new way, and actually, it is going to be very victorious because it's going to lead you in a new path. You have the Seven of Wands here, so this is talking about new forms of boundaries, all right? Um, underneath the deck, you have the Two of Cups, which to me has recently really been about the balance between masculine and feminine energy. Whoa, 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 whoa. And then um, the Two of Cups is very much about the union between um, 
the union between masculine and feminine. But then here we go. We've got the Queen of Pentacles. All right, so we've got the counterparts again today, the Queen of Pentacles with the King of Pentacles, but it's also coming out with the star in reverse. The star in reverse is a, big, uh, is a bit of lack of hope, lack of faith, um, and the universe is really just saying, it's almost screaming, trust me. There are many of you that have lost faith here, lost hope in, in whatever it is you're trying to manifest. But many of you are having to start over. And especially with the progression from the King of Pentacles now down to the Page of Pentacles, that is very much a humbling energy. Very much a humbling energy. And you have a victory. And this really does feel like a tower moment, you guys, because you have an opportunity. Okay, so you... So, okay, maybe you've been demoted, you've been downgraded a little bit, or maybe it may just feel that way because you have leveled up to a sense where now you're in this brand new energetic space and you feel like you got to start over materially or physically. That is okay. And for the most part, I really feel like that's what it is. It's not that you've been downgraded. It's not that you've been demoted. It's that you have leveled up. You've come to a new form of, of awareness. And ultimately, that's going to change your physical reality. That's going to change how you express yourself in the physical world, what you do in the physical world, how you appear in the physical world. So obviously, you're going to have to start at the Page of Pentacles again. But this is, in fact, a victory because you have the opportunity now to place better boundaries in place so that as you grow from the page to the king, ultimately, you are in a much better place this time around than you were when you got, when you got here with the king of pentacles, okay? Now, this, it, it's so funny because with the five of cups here... <laughs> The Five of Cups is that existential dread that we were talking about. I mean, especially com the, the message, it's a com combined message between the King of Pentacles and the Five of Cups. But the Five of Cups is what's physically saying the existential dread, right? As I look at it, I keep hearing it. Okay. Here, you have the Star in Reverse with the Queen of Pentacles. Some of you feel like you will never be able to live up to being the counterpart to someone. But I want you guys to understand that the only thing that has come out in reverse here so far is the star, which is just speaking to a lack of hope, a lack of faith. This is fear in, uh, fear of the unknown. Um, but also, to a certain extent, it's not following the guidance that the universe is giving you. The universe is giving you some sort of guidance here to help you heal, to help you move forward. But some of you are afraid of that. But for others of you, this is talking about that there is no more healing that you need to do. You've done all your healing, and now you're pulling in this counterpart, okay? But for most, the biggest message I'm getting is that you just have to have faith. The universe is saying, just trust me. I mean, you, <laughs> you have the counterparts. You have the king of pentacles. You have the queen of pentacles. You also have the two of cups here. And the Two of Cups has really, the message with the Two of Cups lately has really been about balancing the masculine and feminine energies within, coming into union within. Well, this is happening right here, right now. And for many of you, because you have come into union within, you are pulling in this counterpart. So it may actually absolutely feel like you're starting over. This may be where the existential dread is coming from because you have reached this new level of union. Now, I'm not saying this is complete 100% union, but you have reached this new level of unity within. And so you may have to get your footing a little bit here, okay? But you are putting yourself in a place to heal, to grow, to pull in a counterpart through what it is you learned in the past, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so with all that said, let's clarify the Emperor, the Ace of Cups, and the Ten of Pentacles here. Please, thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you. All right, so... That's nice. Underneath the yes, underneath the deck, you have the fool. 
All right, so a brand new beginning, a brand new start. This is excellent. I told you guys, you're leveling up here. Someone is leveling up. You've got the Knight of Cups. You've got the Four of Pentacles. Ooh, ooh, the Two of Swords and the Seven of Pentacles. Okay. This is interesting. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting, but it's okay. There's a great deal of restraint here. A great deal of restraint. Uh, restraint. Even though, even though you've got the Knight of Cups here. All right, someone wants to make some sort of offer. Someone wants to make some sort of offer, but they are not. Okay. I mean, this kind of makes sense, but they're not really moving forward with that offer right now with the Two of Swords and the Four of Pentacles. There's still an energy of holding back, um, not being willing to decide, not being ready to decide, not having, not feeling like they have the, enough um, information to decide, which would be not feeling not ready. But also there is an energy of not necessarily, even, even though, even though, even though the Knight of Cups, this is, yes, the Knight of Cups is here, okay? There is an offer to be made. There's still an energy of not really wanting to. Not really actually wanting to pull the trigger just yet. Because, and actually, this makes perfect sense. Um, this is speaking directly from masculine energy to me, which is all about restraint, um, um, power, control. And someone here feels the love, has love, also has love for themselves. So because they have this love for themselves, they're not going to rush and into anything too quickly. It's almost as if this person is sitting back and holding and holding in this Knight of Cups energy but in order to really feel it through, to not be wishy-washy about it. There is an express desire to not be wishy-washy here. And I really feel like that forever, whoever is feeling that, whoever is in that energy, I absolutely encourage it. Now, I encourage it in saying, don't take too long, okay? This is not the Knight of Pentacles energy here, so that's good. But you do have the Four of Pentacles with the Two of Swords. So it, there is a risk of holding on too tightly, maybe potentially taking too much time to feel out the energy. But I do encourage this because this is someone that really wants to make sure they know what they're truly feeling here, make sure that this absolutely is correct. Because I really feel like when the emperor comes forward with this Knight of Cups energy, with this, with this offer, it's serious. Like, they're not fucking around. And they're not looking to make some sort of offer for it to just fizzle out. This is not the Knight of Wands energy here, okay? This is the Knight of Cups energy. And someone is absolutely taking their time, especially with the Seven of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles. Now, two things. One, this is absolutely a harvest time for this person or these people or whatever. For all of us, really, this is a harvest time. The Seven of Pentacles is all about the harvest. Um, the Seven of Pentacles does talk about, uh, it represents the sun in Virgo, okay? So this is a moment where we are harvesting everything, but not only, we're doing double duty here. Not only are we harvesting, but we're preparing for the next harvest. So we're tilling the soil. We are preparing the seeds. We're planting the seeds. We're putting together our plan for um, caring for the crop as it grows in order to receive a better harvest in the future, especially with this energy of us coming from this energy here with the King of Pentacles and the Five of Cups and having somewhat of a level up here into now the Emperor energy. We're definitely taking the time to plan this out, to look at what it is we have harvested so far, weigh the pros and cons of everything, weighing that against what it is we truly wish to desire or we truly desire to manifest moving forward, weighing those pros and cons, and then figuring out how do we get to where we want to go? What seeds do I need to plant? How do I need to care for them? How do I need to prepare for the harvest? What All of that kind of stuff, right? So this is why, this is why someone is holding back here with the Two of Swords 
and the Four of Pentacles. Even though the Knight of Cups is here, the Knight of Cups energy is here. This is why somebody is holding back. Also, to a certain extent, the existential dread is kind of still affecting them. But that's all right. For, for some reason, this just feels healthier than normal. Because this combination of the Two of Swords and the Four of Pentacles can be extremely, can get very toxic very quickly. But with the Emperor here and the Ace of Cups, I really feel like it's really, the chances of it getting too toxic are pretty slim. The one thing that could trip you up here is a lack of hope and faith with the star. But I don't really feel like those of us that have actually come into this emperor energy are giving into that anymore. You, or at least you don't allow yourself to get it, to give into that because that really could just delay things in the end, right? But a lot of serious lessons have been learned here, you know, with the hermit being underneath the deck right over here, okay? All right, so actually, I want to pull one last bit of clarification on the magician and the divine wisdom. What is it that we have learned here that we have come, what has come to fruition, come full circle, that has put us in this strong manifestation, well, strong place of manifestation, please, Spirit. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Underneath the deck is the Two of Pentacles. So we really learned to balance. We learned, we've been juggling for a long time. Um, and we've learned to let those things go. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So what fell out face up is the High Priestess, the Two of Wands, the Seven of Cups, and the Ten of Cups here. All right. So... There are some secrets. There is some unknown. We are definitely diving into the unknown a little bit. And there is, there is a choice that we need to make. Um, the choice is what direction we want to go in. What is, it, what is it that we truly want when it comes to emotional fulfillment? You have the Ten of Cups here and the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups like to come out together. Okay, and so I know it's come out in different decks, but it's in the same spread, all right? So we are all moving into this space of, after everything that we've learned from, like the High Priestess has been our teacher here, has been showing us and guiding us and teaching us the, about the deeper parts of ourselves, the, the more mysterious, the darker parts of ourselves have, have, have been, has been helping us shed light on all of those aspects of ourselves, right? And so now we're in a place of power in manifestation. Two of Wands. There is a choice that needs to be made. Seven of Cups. Which direction do you want to go in? Which of these cups is going to be most fulfilling for you? Okay. And so that is the energy that the Emperor is in with the Ace of Cups here. Now the Ace of Cups has an... I'm sorry. The Emperor has an advantage at this point because of the Ace of Cups. Because of that self-love. That self-respect. Because now this cup is full. Now you can look at the Seven of Cups in front of you and say, which of these seven cups is going to match my full cup, which will then ultimately lead you to the 10 of cups, right? Okay, so what else came out here? Oof, <laughs> oh man, the queen of swords with the knight of wands, but actually, <laughs> all right, cool. So I was talking about the knight of wands here, but it came out with the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords is saying, it's cutting out that bullshit. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm not looking for no wishy-washy energy around here. I'm not looking for no one night stand. I'm not looking for no hookup, for no bullshit, for no, for no, uh, like, like, I want passion, but I want grown up passion. I want King or Queen of Wands passion. I don't want no Knight of, of, knight of Wands passion. I don't want no Knight, a uh, page of Wands passion. I want the real deal. I want someone to come forward with the Knight of Cups as the Knight of Cups, not the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Cups. 
bring me value, bring me substance, bring me something that we can actually really build on to get to the king and queen of cups. I'm not looking for no one night stands or overnight bullshit, blah, blah, blah. So there you go. And that's right on top of divine wisdom. Are you going to continue to accept individuals that just want to mess around, just want to fool around, just want to play? Or are you really going to go for the real deal? Are you going to work on manifesting? Are you, uh, what Actually, what they're saying spe specifically is, are you going to stick it out for the real deal? Are you no longer going to settle? There it is. Are you no longer going to settle? For someone that, for whatever just comes in hot and heavy and hot and ready in the moment to just ghost you afterwards. Are you looking for the real deal? Because the Queen of Swords is looking for the real deal, y'all. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> okay. Let's get into the Oracle Guidance section here. We're going to go with some animal spirit. So no really cool colors today, guys, in the sunrise. The sun's just about up here. It did look orange for a while, but there were no, like, clouds to change because it's, it's completely clear, bright, and sunny right now. It's not a cloud in the sky. So there were no clouds to, like, create cool colors, but... Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see what we've got here for us. Thursday, November 29th, 2018. 29th? Yes. Okay, we've got one. And then I think another one popped out. Um, yeah, the 29th. It popped out, but it popped right back in. And I think that was the bear. Oh, underneath the deck you have dolphin. Oh, isn't that cute? I love dolphins. <laughs> I had a dream about dolphins once. Involved. Anyway, <laughs> we have, ooh, beaver. All right, the beaver came out in reverse. I'm going to read it this way, but I'm going to start with dolphin. Here we go. I'm just going to leave it there. Dolphin. Oh, here, let's do it this way. Innately intelligent, a healer, light, blessings. The gifts of the dolphin are beyond what our human minds can grasp. Dolphin personalities are often drawn to the healing arts as they are sensitive to the subtle and enjoy working on the level of spirit. It's easy for dolphin types to underestimate the impact they make in the world. These creatures play such an important role in the wheel of karma that coming in contact with a dolphin type will change the entire course of your day, and thus your life. This card can also indicate a profound blessing is on the way. That's really nice. When in balance, a dolphin is an active healer and has a strong spiritual practice. When out of balance, Dolphin underestimates its own power. To bring into balance, one must surround itself with like-minded spirits. And as I was reading this, I really feel like the, uh, uh, the universe or spirit said existential dread again. And I really feel like this has a lot to do for some of you, maybe just someone specifically. But um, what I was picking up was someone sp is very much a healer that's connecting with this reading right now. Um, and you, I think, I really feel like you've been doing something around healing for a while, but you know, you never really took it that seriously. Like you, you did it. It was a job. It was a, a money maker. It was fulfilling to a certain extent, but you never really took the time to look deeper into it. And now you're all, you're awakening to that. And, and the excess, the, the dread that you're feeling is how you could have possibly let time go by for so long and you never really investigated more. It's almost as if it feels like this is someone who is, you know, a man or a woman of a certain age and now they're getting inspired to look, look deeper into this practice that they've been doing for a certain amount of time. And they're kind of like knocking themselves over upside the head. Like how, 
the hell have you gone so long doing this and you never thought to investigate more? Now, this doesn't have to be for a healer specifically. That's what was coming through as I was reading the, the, the message. But now that I'm saying it in this way, that really could go for anybody. So if you are feeling any sort of existential dread or you're having some sort of existential crisis, that could potentially be the root of it for you. Okay? It doesn't have to be. But for some of you, that really could be it. But ultimately, um, there is a blessing coming through here with dolphin. So that's, that's really beautiful. Okay, next we have beaver. So there's a lot of water coming through with the animal spirits today. Beer, beaver is in the reverse, but let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it upright so you can look at it, but keep in mind that it did come out in reverse, okay? Hard worker, loyal, tireless, family first. The beaver personality is a welcomed sight. These good-natured and dependable creatures have infinite love and enthusiasm for family and express it by way of the earth element, providing a home and financial stability. Although a beaver doesn't usually initiate a project, once started, they'll work steadily for weeks, months, or years to see it through. The beaver card appears when the task at hand requires your long-term, steady effort. It can also signify that it's time for some karma yoga or selfless service. When in balance, beaver has, is happy and does meaningful work. When out of balance, beaver feels useless or worn out. To bring into balance, one must do some physical labor or selfless service. Now, here is why beaver came out in the reverse. This is absolutely, both of these cards here are talking about existential dread. Whatever, whatever, whatever someone is feeling in this way, this is what's happening. Either you've come to this realization that you've been doing this for so long and there's more you need to know or learn so that you can really take it to the next level and you're feeling useless. You're feeling like you might be, you might be feeling like somewhat of a failure. It's like, again, how could I have gone so long and without really doing this more? I could have been so much further along by now. Please let that go, okay? Because ultimately you just weren't ready for it. All right, at the time, but now you're ready for it. So now you're getting the inspiration. So just go with it. Your life is not over yet. Even if you are a person of a certain age, who the fuck cares? Do what it is that makes you happy. Go for it. But for some of you, Beaver has come out in reverse because you do want a family. I mean, look at this. We have the King and the Queen of Pentacles right here. That is, those are the family. Those are, that is the family. This is the mother and the father. You've got the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. The Two of Cups came out underneath the deck while I was clarifying the King of Pentacles and this Five of Cups here. You have the Knight of Cups. There's love here. There's passion here. Somebody, there are some of you that really want to get married, that want to have a family. And you may still be in this hermit stage of trying to figure out how you can do that. And so Beaver came out in reverse because some of you are feeling inadequate. Some of you are feeling like you could never live up to the person that you think you would need to be in order to be that family man, that father, that wife, that mother, that wife, that husband. And I'm here to tell you right now, you really don't need to be anything other than who you are already. And just let, and manifest your life from your place of power here. The magician, the divine wisdom, the hermit, the emperor, the ace of cups, Manifest from your position of power. Don't try and compare yourself to somebody else, your mother, your father, any sort of masculine or feminine energies in your family or in your life that you may have looked up to. Don't compare yourself to them. Be your representation of that mother or that father. Be your representation of that husband or that wife. And I, I promise you, the more you are yourself, the more you will attract that ideal partner, that counterpart, that king or queen of pent that king of pentacles to your queen of pentacles, or that queen of pentacles to your king of pentacles, that will honor and love and trust that in you and will want to create a life with you because you are authentically you, not some carbon copy, okay? And to be quite honest, that's who the emperor is here. He's not a carbon copy. He's very much himself. He's very much in control of his domain. 
Yes? Okay. Alrighty, guys. So I'm going to close the reading with one card from the Crystal Mandala deck. Whoops. One more shuffle. One more. Boop. Alrighty. One card, please, Spirit, to close the message for today, November 29th, 2018. There we go. Aw, her golden grace. Card number 38. Goddess Lakshmi. I love me some Lakshmi, y'all. She is the goddess of abundance, of love, of blessings, of, um, yeah. She's, she's, she's so beautiful. She's one of my favorites. Um, so Goddess Lakshmi and Dendritic Agate. Her golden grace. Oh, God, I'm so excited. I can't wait to read this one to you guys. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Her Golden Grace. We bring you the empowerment of Her Golden Grace, Divine Mother Lakshmi, who brings blessings of enlightenment and prosperity, beauty and good fortune, smiles upon you now. Open your mind to the, rea to the reality of divine generosity without limit. Open your heart to feel worthy of her love. When you allow her to grant you bounty, to bless you with her golden grace, she is empowered to shine her divine beauty in the world, to heal, uplift, inspire, and enchant the souls in need. I do want to read some more of this here. The generous golden grace of the divine feminine has its own way of accomplishing its purpose to uplift, heal, and inspire the hearts of humanity. When there is fear which prevents a soul from being open and allowing life to happen, the divine mother may respond by wrenching whatever is obscuring the flow of love out of the way. If her fierce intervention is needed to ensure freedom for the soul, then this is what she expresses. Sometimes the harder path is what will truly free a soul from needing to repeat a pattern. Sometimes, however, what the harder path does not accomplish for the soul is not, spirit, is not particularly helpful. If a soul would become more enslaved in fear at the prospect of her fierceness, or could benefit as much or more from a softer intervention, then the Universal Mother will employ a gentler method. The softer touch of the Universal Mother is the warming glow of her golden grace. The grace, this grace is powerful. It can evoke reaction too, sometimes gratitude and wonder, but sometimes giving rise to issues about receiving, self-worth, and even fear of prosperity. If you have come far enough on your spiritual path, you will, you will know that love, even in its most general, in gentle expression, will trigger the release of pain. The mind may desire the abundance, love, beauty, and prosperity of the divine goddess Lakshmi, and yet upon offering the very thing that is desired, it can retreat in fear. I'm sorry, and yet upon being offered the very thing that is desired, it can retreat in fear, doubt, and feelings of unworthiness. If you are feeling as though there are limits in your life that you would like to transcend, perhaps in a particular and perhaps in particular, any limits you feel regarding abundance, prosperity, and good fortune, and spiritual enlightenment, then you will be open to the message the Oracle gives you now. The Golden Mother includes you in her plan to spread the bounty of life throughout the world. As you receive from her, you will be empowered to share her vibrant grace with others. Open your heart to her golden smiling face and allow love's abundance to fill your world. Hmm. Last one. If in your heart you have felt there are better times ahead, 
even though you may not have a particular reason for it other than a feeling in your heart, the oracle brings you confirmation. Even if you are yet to realize the touch of her golden grace in your life, you shall do so. The rising sun of her golden beauty shall shine upon you, ushering in a time of love, prosperity, and peace. All right, guys. So there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you all have a great day. And, um, oh, also, I just want to let you guys know, I am going to be opening up private readings starting in December. I'm not going to be taking as many um, as, you know, I normally would because I do kind of still want to take it a bit easy. But I will be available. So anyone that would like a private reading with me, um, all of the readings are in the description box of all of my videos. Keep in mind, though, that some prices are different between the videos. Um, if you're looking for the most recent prices for video for uh, readings, check the most recent videos, okay, um, date-wise, because that has the updated prices. Um, once I have a website, you know, everything will be much easier, but I just haven't gotten to that stage yet. But um, I am available for private readings if you would like one, yes. Much love to you all, and have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah, take care. Mwah. Bye.